Hello, this is Sahara playing another adventure of Legends of Isenwald. Okay, so we got ourselves cured. I believe this takes us up to... Yes, it does. There's some moving around up there. can't see them. Okay, this takes us up to Castle Gutberg. Gut? Gutberg? As you enter the castle, you see a few men, a few men engaged in training. The young post commander is walking to and fro, assisting the participants with evident excitement. He calls a break. If you go to sit down and others simply lean against a wall to catch their breath, you approach the commander. Greetings, I come from Chancellor Werner. I need to see Count Daniel. You're speaking to him, okay? The Chancellor gave me ad advance notice about your visit, though he never told me your name. Kern von Lonsten at your service, and we weren't supposed to tell him our name. Ah, I know of that name. You will need a new one, as that one has become rather notorious in these parts, and the enemy mustn't know that you've arrived in our lands. Yeah, isn't that what the Chancellor told us? To tell you the truth, I hadn't considered that. Yes, you did. You were told not to give your name. Then by all means, let us choose a new name for you right now. How about Sivla the Avenger? No, that's too direct. How about something a little more subtle? Landgrave Endelin is entitled Rothwald, meaning he comes from Red Forest. You should call yourself something like Holtzfalter, a lumberjack. Lumberjack? I am no commoner to bear such a name. I'd rather call myself the Red Huntress, Rothjagger, or I will one day... Play the one who lives in the Red Forest. Sounds great. And what first name will you choose? Juliana, as that was my mother's name. So be it then. A pleasure to meet you, Juliana Rothjagger. Don't forget that is your name from now on. And now let's go to your, my chambers. We need to discuss the circumstances that these lands are in now. Okay. And we've got troops! Yay, we got troops! We've got infantrymen! I can hire up to three. A soldier, infantry, costs more, but he's gonna be better. We have a bowman. Okay. We know what a guard does. I'm gonna hire a guard. Do we really need another bowman right now? So welcome to the party, Ignatius, Ignatius, Oberlich, Raymond, hmm, Nino the Oak, <laughs> the names they gave him, Rito the Unbound, do we need an archer? Hmm. Well, he can't use anything that I have here, of course not, of course not, he's not leveled up high enough I guess. All right, so we start over. See, they caught him in the land, so he's, I don't know. This, this is supposed to be up here. And this is supposed to be here. There we go. Oh, God, it's just not right what they're doing to this. That's a new one I just bought. Okay, so let's talk to Daniel. Something, well, let's talk to him first. Probably nothing. Good day, little lady. You have nothing to worry about. Yes, we already know that. Okay, greetings, Juliana. How goes your hunt? Patrol um, asked Daniel about his kin. To tell you the truth, I don't really like to boast of my descent or go through my lineage. There are much more interesting things to do, but I can't but mention that there were quite famous people on my ancestors. But why not? I'll share a story or two. Of course not. People like to always talk about themselves. About a hundred years ago, an intermissing war raged in Trevor. The enemy had already captured all the lowlands, and only the castles on the ridge remained unassailable. The Count issued a cry for help. A strange knight in black-red armor came from the, scout, from the south. He told everyone to refer to him as Adam the Exile. Adam? Hmm. 
Many disliked him immediately, which was understandable, for he was silent and violent. Besides, he had made a vow never to uncover his face, and when, for some reason, he had to remove his helm, he hid his face in the shadow of a broad-brimmed hat. He usually ate alone, too. Nevertheless, he was an experienced commander. It was as if he knew in advance when and where the enemy would be waiting. The act of war was like his second nature to him. He attacked at the most unexpected times, and likewise suddenly disappeared with his forces. He encouraged his warriors and fought like a devil himself. The Count entrusted him with the defense of Trevor. When the enemies were driven away, as a reward for his help, the Count allowed Adam to marry his daughter and to inherit the title of one of his own sons. But even when he was married, even when the crown to the Count was placed on him, his black helm remained upon his head. But he didn't stay for too long. New battles and beauty, booty called to him, and soon he gathered the most reckless of his former comrade companions in arms and headed for the north. But his children remained here and had their own descendants. Thus, you see one of Adam the Exile's descendants in front of you right now. Okay? Um, Asked Daniel to talk about himself. As you may already have guessed, I'm a great connoisseur of the art of swordsmanship. Tournaments, too. The courtyard of my castle very often turns into a tilt yard, and they often gain quite a few spectators, not entirely unlike gladi gladiator fights in ancient times. You can hardly find a knight nearby that I haven't bested in a sword fight. However, that is not my only passion. Training of the mind is no less important than a body and soul. There's nothing that my contemporaries, both common and noble, don't even suspect. Daniel smiles mysteriously at you and points at a large casket covered with peculiar signs. Alchemy? Spells? Or, God save me, heresy? Similar to Abigistine or Hustleys? Hustleys? No, nothing of the sort. It's Daniel opens the casket and turns out to be full of small carved statuettes, paper cards, and many-sided dice. A board game. Like chess? Exactly, but the truth is, there exist many such games. This is the one that un unites chess, dice, and cards. It takes constant, it takes calculation and wit, and delivers such excitement as chess cannot dream to give. There isn't a more enjoyable or, of it, or exciting time than spending your evenings by the fireplace with such a game, especially with a small barrel of fine wine and the good company of silent and merry friends, or smart and merry friends. I understand, but having so many interesting and important pastimes, how do you find time to take care of your lands? Do you suppose I spend all my days doing these things alone? Not so. Nevertheless, I have much less time due to the recent troubles and the upcoming war. Then we'll see if my war games were useless. True. But most importantly, Corinne, you're not supposed to call me Corinne. My name is Juliana, remember? If my friend or comrade gets into trouble, I will always provide. And so if you're ever in danger, you can always count on finding sanctuary here behind the walls of Gutberg. Okay. Hello. Um, a board game. I've already told you that I'm a fan of different activities of the mind, haven't I? One of my favorites is a special kind of board game similar to chess. It's called Lineage. If you want, I can teach you to play it. What kind of game is it, and why is it called that? A traveling merchant from the Far East sold it to me. He bought. He brought it from. He brought. He brought it from this country, which lies on the other end of a great road. Why lineage? To tell you the truth, I don't know. It keeps its name from the way non-Christians called it, but the rules are interesting. Listen, players have a figurine each that looks like a warrior. Every warrior has its own characteristics expressed with numbers and also a set of actions that it can apply on the field. Unlike chess, uh, unlike chess, must use dice to define how lucky you are when performing this or that action. With enthusiasm, Daniel explains to you the rules of this peculiar game. From his explanation, only one thing becomes thoroughly clear. Success in lineage is mainly determined by sheer luck. <laughs> So now, let us, it's probably kind of like Monopoly. So now, let us move on to practice. I don't much like playing for fun alone, so if you want to play, let's just, let's each put 50 Giddens at stake. No, I don't think so. Um, find out the situation in Trevor. <coughs> so I've got to tell it like, so I've got to tell it like that. 
the Landgrave sent one of his best men here. Okay, what's that name? Reynig, also known as Weasel. He got his nickname for destroying settlements and castles as easily as a weasel destroys birds' nests. He managed to, cap to capture Castle Schwarz, a well-reinforced castle situated at the end of the northern range, of the mountain range. Schwarz? Why don't you gather local knights and bite them, bite them off? More easily said than done, the Lord, <coughs> the Lord seemed more worried about their own profits than interested in taking the fight to the true enemy. One of my liegemen has even turned his coat and now fights for the Landgrave. <coughs> Jonas, the jump, Jonas, the trumpeteer from <coughs> Roringas, took the Landgrave's side as soon as he had promised him the freedom to rob and kill whomever he wanted, whomever he wished. The others are just as bad. They fight each other for land and wealth like greedy children looking for candy. And it seems that that is the Landgrave's plan, to have the liegemen come to him in order to resolve their problems, and in return promise him their allegiance. Alas, I have no time to settle their conflicts. Nowadays, it's much more important to prepare for the siege and capture Castle Schwartz. No easy task. And one very decent lady was recommended to me to suppress the knights who had gone too far. This person, according to the Chancellor, has quite a lot of experience in such matters. Yes, yes, I do. I see, indeed, this is not the first time I have stopped internal strife. I managed to do it in my own lands, so hopefully I can do it in yours. Yeah, I did it by killing off my vassals, <laughs> except for one. That's great. Let me know as soon as you manage to settle peace here. I'll head for Schwartz immediately. I hope you'll accompany me in this campaign. I have one more question. Landgrave Elderlin set his army on the path to Trevor from the west without having captured East Rothwell. Thus, Weasel was left unprotected from the rear. Do you have any ideas why the Landgrave must hurry so much? Indeed, that's a good question. I was fairly confused myself. I spent some I sent some spies to the enemy's camp, but they only managed to find out one thing. The weasel and his men are looking for something. So far it's not clear what exactly. Perhaps it will be you who will be able to find it out. Except for me, not a living soul knows you knows you're here. You can go to West Weasel and call yourself a noble a noblewoman or a huntress or of sorts looking for loot. He is likely to give you some task, and that you that will give you a thread that may lead you to an answer. A good suggestion. Thank you. You're always welcome, and if you happen to have some free time, we ought to take our minds away from grim matters and engage in lineage, a game of wits, or we could exercise the swords. Yes, you'll need some funds for a start. Take this purse. I'm sure it will come in handy. I'm sure... It will, yeah, come in useful. <clears throat> so I get 300 coins. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. So, patrol on the roads. Listen, Julian, I have an important task for you. It's become known to me that the Landgrave didn't limit himself to, to only a simple invasion in Trevor. He is quietly gathering all kinds of mercenaries in the county that, at a fixed time, will carry out his slaughter here. It's just like him... Naturally, I'm trying to prevent it from happening. That's why I'm settling patrols on the roads to search everybody who passes by. But my people can barely handle it. So if you could do me a favor and patrol for a while, I'd be extremely grateful to you. Take into account that this task will take a whole day cycle, from midday till midday. All the time you'll need to keep your eyes open on the road. Otherwise, you'll let unwelcome guests pass. If you're up to the task, come to me before midday. I'll appoint a place for you where you'll be examining strangers. Okay. Say goodbye. <coughs> so, do I want a bowman? I can, I can take one more. Well, I can't take him. I can't take another one him. And these are okay, but... Um, no, nah, I think I'll, I'll, I will go ahead and hire a bowman. Um, and then, <coughs> there's that market down here, right? There was a place I thought, no. Not there. Okay, let's go to the market. See if there is anything I can equip them with. Well, we've got willpower. 
That always helps. For him. And this guy. Melee attack. Definitely needs that. Had to get rid of all that stuff before. Now I'm back down to 1,000 again. Okay. And who's this? What's this up here? Hillside, friendly. Can we hire somebody here? <gasps> yes, we got a healer woman! That's what I was waiting for. I didn't want to get rid of my one spot because a healer woman will always come in helpful. Always, always, always. All right, you can have that. Um, yes, so she can do regeneration. Yes, 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 yes. All right, so what are we doing now? <clears throat> I don't think I'm up for hunting for the werewolf examination. Enlin, with the help of the henchman guards, trying to determine what I'm trying to do you want to land grave looking for. Find out what the landgrave is looking for. Daniel spies and forms that the landgrave might must be looking for something you need. And where is he at? Oh, he's quite up over there. Okay, well, let's leave that. I want to go down here to the south. So let's go down here to the south and fill this area in if we can. You know, there are some bad people moving around down here. Oh, and there are so many down here, too something down here. Let's put it that way. Aha. Ruined tower. Oh, wow. There's quite a few guys here. Let's save. A lot of archers. He's a fencer. How come I'm not on horseback? Because I'm in the... Alright. You won't do much damage. Alright. Wow, I like that. <laughs> okay, okay, healer woman. Um, well, I need it. I need it, but he does too. I can't let him go down. Okay. Get him done. Let's get him down. Yep, darn it. Nope, nope. That's what I was afraid of. doing much good, are they? Yep. Okay. I know. Um, load game. I can do it. I know I can do it. I know I can do it. This would be good booty and good money. This guy is doing a lot of problems there, so let's get rid of him. Yeah, but they're shooting at me. Yep, they're targeting me. And I have that necklace on.
You should take them both out. <laughs> it's just so amazing. It's just so amazing. All right. Oh, they healed me. Oh. All right. Hmm. Obviously, I need to level up higher. Obviously, obviously. Darn it, darn it. I can't afford to lose myself. I know there was some people wandering down here. There's someone bad down here. There we are. I just saw him, too. Where'd you go? Greetings, traveler. May God bless you. I'm Juliana Rothjagger, a nobleman. I have come to Trevor in search of glory and justice. They say that the Landgrave's men from Wathwild invaded these lands, and the local knighthood is about to oppose them. Is that right? Yes and no. The fact that men in Rothwild appeared there is the truth. Oh, this is Pauline Pine. Okay. But not everybody is willing to fight against them. Take... Um... Take... Yuklin von Clemency, also known as Water Spirit, for instance. He's not likely to face the swordsmen of Wathwild. What does a loyalty ult uttered over a cross mean if he's a pagan? As far as I can tell, you're a righteous Catholic. You'll fight against the Landgrave, won't you? That's right. An oath over a cross is sacred to me, but the very moment my neighboring pagan notices me setting off on a campaign, he'll sneak up and stab me in the back. I need to be... Insane to fight two enemies at a time. I I won't match against Landgrave while the lands of Kalinsians stand between us. My grandfather swore to exterminate paganism in Trevor, and I will fulfill his oath before taking my own. Oh, he's one of the people that I have to fulfill their needs. And you, if you've really come for justice, then perhaps you will be able to help me. Assist me in dealing with the heretic. What can bring more glory than a crusade? Okay. This is kind of odd. Honey, enough to defeat. This is pigments. Okay, so I guess I need to go up and talk to them. Interesting. Peasant. Peasants. of walking around in this game. Is there anything up here that I need to find? I think I was up over there on the hillside. What's this over here? Looks like it's a graveyard. Look, here's another guy on horseback. Wait, wait, who are you? Am I going to come back? Guardsman Crossway. That's what this crossway is about. Can we hire another peasant woman there? Okay, so we've got some talking. Philip the Reaper, do you have something to tell me? Oh, this is Philip. Get lost, bigger. I don't have time for you. Really? Hmm. I'm curious merchant. Um... Listen, honorable people, is it here in Trevor where lived the famous master Tol Toldbert? I think we heard of him. Well, yes, yeah, some say he still lives to this day, but why do you ask? If he has truly lived that long, he must have made many musical instruments. And what if, what if I were to receive a wonderful instrument such as this? I know I would be able to sell such a such for a lot of gold, and I mean a lot, but how would I be able to buy it? That riddle he made 
for a hundred years. Oh, that fiddle he made for a hundred years. Where did he? Where did it go then? Oh, this is the crystal tree one. I think where he wanted to make the most beautiful the crystal apple. Okay. Well, it's a bit late for that, sadly. Another greedy man got a hold of it, and with it created much evil. Much evil with the musical toy? Yes, that is how the story goes. Are we going to go another one of these? Yes, we are. Oh, these people hanging from the trees. That's not good. Once upon a time, there was a band, and it had seven times seven rogues plus their chieftain, in total half a hundred men. Each band of seven rogues was led by a rabbiteer, and the chieftain possessed the magic fiddle of Master Joltbert. Barely had he touched its strings before the surrounding lands sank into a deep sleep. Bands of the rogues burst into sleeping towns and villages and plundered them. But they met their match when they entered Rothwald. This happened before the death of the sleepless count. So the magical dream didn't affect him. He tracked them down and imprisoned all fifty. A priest was brought to ask them to repent of their sins. All of them did except one in each seven. Every one of the rogues was hanged for his crimes. The seven unrepentant sinners were buried by the sleepless count in his lands, in lonely graves within the wastelands. Now the cavalcade of the seven dead horsemen ride each night with the count. The riders... The riders kill anyone who stands in the way of the count, so he rides without ceasing. So there is no chance to stop him in order to gaze into his eyes. Okay. Hmm, interesting, but you never said what happened to their leader, and where did the fiddle go? That's altogether a different story, and I don't know it well, but maybe somebody else does. There are many people in the world, and they all have their stories. Don't they, don't they just... Okay, so let's see if there's any new tavern. Oh, there's a ghost towers. That one we heard. Uh, that one we heard and this one here. So it looks like there's three new ones here. Three, one, yeah, ghost tower. <clears throat> In the middle of the southern forest, there stands a high tower. You can see it from afar. In the southern forest, that would be down where I was at. Okay. On moonlit nights, people often notice a young girl on the wall. She's so pale, she's nearly transparent. Her hair floats on the air, and when it falls down, her locks reach the bottom of the tower, and here's her story. A long time ago, when there wasn't any Christianity in Trevor, there was a powerful castle behind that tower, and its master was a pagan, of course. And there was a castle behind that tower. It was a ruin. Hmm. And when St. Landry came and brought Christian faith to Trevor that night, refused to be christened and forbade his people to do it as well. Then the Christians fought against him. With prayers, they defeated the pagan troops and besieged the enemy in his castle. For many days, he resisted the siege, but when he realized there was no other way, but then he realized there was no other way, and then he turned to the wood king himself for help. He, the latter promised to bury all his enemies alive. In return, he asked the pagan king to give him his beautiful daughter who had golden braids head to foot, and here's what he told him. The way to my kingdom is, is long and hard. That's why your daughter is to bring three things with her. A cloak lined with fur so that she doesn't freeze. A silk bridle for her not to fall off her stallion. And most importantly, a silver comb for her to pin up her hair on the way, on her way to me. Otherwise, she will catch her hair on the brambles and get lost and won't find her way. I just under, don't understand how getting your hair caught in brambles gets you lost. But anyway, it wasn't easy for her father to part with his daughter, but he had no choice. The Christians had, in, had already started to assault the walls, and he began packing her things. And the daughter didn't really want to go to the wood kingdom, so she deliberately lost her silver comb. The servants searched everywhere, but were unable to find it. The Christians had almost taken all the castle. Only one tower was left. Then the father lost his patience and said, Take her like that, wood king. And with those words, he pushed her off the tower. Wow. At once the nearest forest started to drone and moan, as if somebody was stretching the roots of burnable trees like strings and began to play such a wild dance that the earth itself trembled. The castle fell and buried the, the invaders alive. More than a century has passed since then, but nobody has, has buried those warriors any Christian way. They're sleeping under the ruined walls of the castle, and they say if somebody starts making noise there at night, they may wake up. And since then, people have been afraid of settling down in the lands of the pagan king. Thick forests grew over everything there. 
had a list full of th whores, and his daughter was able was unable to get to the wood ki kingdom without a silver comb. Every moonlight, if she, if the moon shines, she appears on the tower and looks for a silver comb in the moonlight, but she can't find it. So, am I going to find her silver comb in the moonlight? Interesting. Okay, we got people in the swamps. So here's what I'll tell you. There's a small swampy lake in the forest in the north. Near Castle Punch, Punch. On its shore once stood Old Punch, but that didn't stand long. Many years ago, a sly knight decided to build an impregnable castle among the swamps, so that in the case of a siege, the enemy would get trapped within the quagmire. But it was difficult to build walls on swampy soil. He gathered all his peasants to help in the to help in the task. Yeah, it would be hard. When the building started, people started falling, falling, feeling, falling ill with consumption, an internal compulsion, an internal companion of swampy dampness. People brought it alive, and their bones were put beneath the stones of the castle. Oh, that's kind of gruesome. But that didn't stop the night. When he heard about the delays with the construction, he grew angry and ruthlessly forced everybody to work even harder. Countless numbers of young, strong men were killed by the swamp. When the construction was finished, not even half the number of people who had started it remained. An old peasant who had buried three sons there, when dying himself, said, May these walls be cursed. I wish for them as well as us to be swallowed alive by the swamp. The master moved into the castle, but he didn't feel good in the least. The swampy dampness pre pre penetrated through the slabs of the floor and spread all over the corridor and halls, even up to the highest tower. The walls of the castle soon were overgrown by moss and mold, and venomous snakes infested the basement. Oh yeah, you're living in a swamp. But the greedy knight was not discouraged by any of that. There will be someone to guard my gold, he said, and he certainly had plenty of it in his basements. In a year's time, the castle's level had declined because the ground it was built on had sunk lower. As the years passed, the castle floor sunk deeper and deeper into the swamps. Some of the walls cracked and the cracks were immediately covered with mold, so it looked as though even the stone was rotting. But the knights still would not consider leaving his fortress. One night, the walls of the castle, st castle stooping and lop lopsided like a consumptive old man lost her strength and collapsed in on itself. The old peasant's curse came true. Hmm. Hello. And what about the knight's treasure? Where did it go? Did it remain to rust in the swamps? Yes, they say that it is an old fooch even now. But there's no way to reach it because anyone who tries to get there inevitably gets caught within the swamp. However, some are able to, tra to traverse, traverse it. Traverse it? It is said that if you go to the gates of the castle at night, of course at night, the drowned men will come out for, to you, the ones that used to live in the castle, and pull you into their quagmire. If you manage to fight them off, you should return again the following night, and once again after that. The one who stands the test will not be taken by the quagmire, and will be able to walk safely on the swamp as though it is firm ground. Then you'll be able to enter the castle. Aha, I heard that. One knight trusted these tales, equipped himself, and set off to get the treasure. But because he was wearing heavy armor, he didn't even manage to reach the gates of Old Fooch. The swamp swallowed him up much earlier. Ah, so you cannot wear any heavy armor. So it's got to be... It would have to be... It couldn't be any infantrymen or on horseback. It would have to be um, archers. Oh, my goodness. Okay. I get that now. Um, the soul stolen by the wood king. We only have one more left to read, and then we'll end this. Um, so we don't have any reading in the next one. <clears throat> I'm afraid I'm filled with wonder regarding the dense forest which lies to the south. There must be a lot of game there, correct? There may be a lot of game there, but there aren't many volunteers to get it. You'll certainly disappear if you go there. And why is that? I'm not even. It's not a normal forest. Oh, aye, there are trees and deer and other such things. But under, but other things grow there as well. They say a magic apple tree grows in the middle of it. Oh, to the south, okay. There are such apples growing on it that the one who bites it off will become immortal. But to prevent people from getting the apples, the wood king enhanced, enchanted all the ways that led 
to it. Even if you walk for a whole year along the path, you won't get to the apple tree. There is only one path leading to the apple tree, but it's invisible to the human eye. Does anybody believe these children's tales? Even nowadays, there are odd fellows who wish to, to taste these apples, so they go into the forest, and then everything depends on their luck. Those who go at the right time understand that their idea is pointless and come back empty-handed. Others simply get lost in the forest and become the prey of wolves or maybe even a lynx. But the worst thing happens to those who approach the apple tree. For those, the wood king himself appears and takes their souls once they pick the apple from the tree. And how do we know this? These people are dead. How do you know this is what happens? After, they, after that, these forsaken ones wander along the enchanted paths, and none of them can turn aside from those paths anymore. And people who happen to travel in that forest say that when you walk along the road, there's a voice from behind the trees moaning something in its dead language. Any traveler would run, but if they turn around, they see black figures following them, skinny and crooked. Fancy that. Yeah, fancy that, of course. Just imagine. So, well, honey, there isn't worth the effort. For all I know, you can become food yourself, but for something far worse than animals. All right, innkeeper. Hmm. All right, so I think we got enough of that. Um, and we're not going to hire, we don't have any room to hire anybody. Okay, I got to take some castles, it looks like. So anyway, on that note, I'm going to go ahead and end this episode. This is becoming interesting. Um, so we're here, we need to go, um, we need to go down. This is that southern forest that they're talking about. Yeah, and there's some baddies in there that we just can't seem to fight very well. So... Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and close this episode. If you enjoyed it, click like, leave a comment. Thank you for watching. Sahara out.